if you haven't heard, there's been some explosive information coming out of the state of Arizona. Carrie Lake, who's been an advocate and a supporter of Donald Trump, not only for the 2020 elections and all that is concerned with and surrounds the integrity of the election, but also in her own running for governor in the state of Arizona and some of the integrity of the elections that occurred there, now has determined that she is going to run for Senate. Now, during the process of her running for Senate, she sat down and had a conversation that she recorded and recently leaked with the GOP leader in the state of Arizona, Jeff DeWitt, who's the chairman. During this conversation, Jeff DeWitt decides to bribe Carrie Lake. I'm not playing. Talks about different people inside of Washington that do not want her to run, possibly even some cartel money involved, and they were doing whatever they could to get her price to take her down. Listen to this. Is there a number at which... I can be bought. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's about. You can take a pause for a couple of years. No. And then go right back to what you're doing. No. 10 million, 20 million, 30, no, no, no. A billion, no. This is not about money. This is about our country. So what's going on? What is, uh, I'm assuming this is our friend. This is back east. There are very powerful people that want to keep you out. I know oh, they do. They're willing to put their money where their mouth is in a big way. This conversation never happened. This is crazy, though. These people are corrupt. If you if you say no, which is fine, it's your choice. Don't tell people. I They're gonna have try to have me murdered. <laughs> if that stuff that came out last week is right about the cartel stuff, I mean, I the cartel, they say the cartel's operating in fifty states right now. So what what what's going on? Who is it? What? Forget the who. Let me just tell you the what. Let's just say there are people calling around. No, they can't repeat this. Never repeat this. If you say no, don't. Because I got offered to buy out. Yeah. Rather than just say, let's work with her. She's a great candidate. Because they don't own me. And it pisses me off. Yeah, it's not it's about ownership. It's about control. It's about being on the team. They want you to be on their team. But if they're pushing a globalist agenda, I can't do that. So what do they want? What do they want me to do? They want you to stay opportunities. <laughs> but let me tell you what I can offer you. So the, the ask of me was, it's kind of funny. So the, the ask I got today from back east was, is there any companies out there or something that could just put her on the payroll and give her to keep her out? And I said, well, what are you willing to do? Like, whatever we need to do. This is about defeating Trump. This is about the final death blow to Trump. I am not, like if the they're going to steal the election to make me and our, our movement go away, I'm not letting them do that. I owe it to the people of Arizona. Or. To carry their torch and their voice. Or. You don't go away. But you pause. This is the battle is right now, Jeff. You pause. And you fill your coffers. No, the battle is right now. The battle is right now. And um, we don't have time to, to pause on this battlefield. It's, it, it's a, it's a backscratching club. That's all DC is. It's a big mm -hmm. backscratching club. I'm not willing to accept that. Then I'm going to be the biggest pain in these people's Go back and tell them that. I'm running, and I'm going to be the biggest pain in their and they're going to have to kill me to stop me. Unreal. Now, either this is one big psyop or this is absolutely factual, not edited. This is legitimate. And if it is, it's what we've been telling you all along. It is an effort collaborated multiple fronts military industrial complex, medical industrial complex within DC, lobbyists, etc. There's global elite who have their hand in this thing that are trying to move the needle. And they have been, they own both sides. It's clear to see. I mean, here's this guy who's the chairman of the GOP in the state of Arizona, bribing his own teammate. Why would you do that? Unless you were owned, bought, and paid for. Now, after he was caught, he came out today actually with a letter himself that he put out for immediate release. And I'm going to read that to you. It says, statement from Chairman Jeff DeWitt. In light of the recent revelation that Carrie Lake has released a selectively edited audio recording of our private conversation, I must clearly address this deceptive tactic. The recording from over 10 months ago is not only taken out of context, but also undermines the integrity of private discussions critical for party leadership. Now, tell me, what would be critical for party leadership to a discussion about you bribing one of your own teammates? There's nothing critical about that. It's not critical. It's corrupt. He goes on to say, as chairman, my primary duty is to strengthen our party. Well, you failed there, Jeff. You tore it down, my boy. 
which often he says involves challenging dialogue and strategic decisions. These conversations are meant to assess and enhance the viability of our candidates. The viability, well, you obviously have none yourself, sir. You need to remove yourself, which he did in this letter. It says the truth is when I took the helm, our party was in disarray, financially unstable, organizationally weak and lacking in momentum. Today, we've made significant improvements in acquiring a new office headquarters, legal victories for election integrity and historic fundraising achievements. Yeah, more money in your pocket is what I'm hearing. Contrary to the notion of me being an enemy of Lake's, this conversation was recorded while I was actually employing Lake in my private company. Dude, it's typical tactic of somebody who is a narcissist putting yourself over. I was providing for her. I was doing her a favor. Goes on to say, our relationship was based on friendship and the conversation that is now being scrutinized was an open, unguarded exchange between friends in the living room of her house. I genuinely believed I was offering a helpful perspective to someone I consider a friend. Helpful perspective by bribing her and telling her that there's people who want her to step down and that was okay? I would think you would immediately take this legal. But again, I guess those people own the legal system, right? As we just saw in Texas with the five to four Supreme Court ruling to open up the border to people who we have no idea who the heck they are. That's another story for you in just a second. He says, Lake had a massive megaphone that I cannot compete with. I am just a business and financial guy that got recruited into this unpaid role that demands the amount of time of roughly two full time jobs, nights, weekends, holidays and more all work days. So now it's poor me. I'm just a business guy and I came in to do this role as a volunteer and now I'm being scrutinized. He says, my motivation for accepting this position was that I wanted to contribute positively with the primary focus being the betterment of Arizona and our nation through the election of competent individuals. While there is much more that I could express, I must refrain from defending myself as I could potentially undermine this objective. BS, dude. Get out of here with that. He said, since our conversation where I advised Lake to postpone her campaign and aim for governor's position in two years, she has been on a mission to destroy me. It was a suggestion made in good faith, believing it could benefit both her future prospects and the party's overall strategy. The release of our conversation by Lake confirms a disturbing tendency to exploit private interactions for personal gain and increases concerns about her habit of secretly recorded personal and private conversations. This is obviously a concern given how much interaction she has with high profile people, including President Trump. I said things I regret, but I realize when hearing Lake's recording that I was set up, I believe she orchestrated this entire situation to have control over the state party. And it's obvious from the recording that she crafted her performances, her performance responses with the knowledge that she was recording it, intending to use this recording later to portray herself as a hero in her own story. This morning, I was determined to fight for my position. However, a few hours ago, I received an ultimatum from Lake's team. Resign today or face the release of new, more damaging recording. So she's got even more. And it's like, no, I was going to fight for my position. No, the fact of the matter is, is you know that you did wrong. You got caught red-handed and now there's nothing you can do about it. He said, I'm truly unsure of its contents, but considering our numerous past open conversations as friends, I mean, your ability to be open and illegal with the tactics that you use as a chairman of a party. Yeah, I've decided not to take the risk. I am resigning as Lake requested in the hope that she will honor her commitment to cease her attacks, allowing me to return to the business sector, a field I find much more logical and I prefer over politics. Yeah, because you're probably super corrupt in business too, bro. And we're going to find out and we're going to put the spotlight on your companies and everything you do as well. I'm a proud supporter of President Trump, having worked diligently as the COO and CFO of his 2016 campaign, served in his administration for two years and returned as the COO in the 2020 campaign. Like many Republicans, I'm eager to see him return to the White House, bringing him back, bring back low inflation, a secure border, economic growth. President Trump is not only a successful businessman, but also a passionate patriot. We have both faced the challenge of dealing with unauthorized recordings, a situation no one should endure. So now he tries to tie himself in with Trump. Hey, no, but I back Trump. And, you know, we both have this uh, of getting recorded when we're not wanting to be recorded. No, dude, you got caught being recorded for the wrong thing. In closing, my actions will always reflect what is best for Arizona Republicans, our commendable elected officials and our mission to reclaim the White House. This is all such a distraction to that mission, and I'm doing as Miss Lake wishes, and I'm stepping down as chairman of the Arizona Republic Party. I got to get your guys' thoughts on this. Please chime in. Please, please tell me what you're thinking here. Please rumble, YouTube, 
X, wherever you're at, chime in Facebook. Let me know what you guys think. This is absolutely ridiculous, insane, illegal. This should be sought after with legal consequence to the utmost degree. Unreal. And and you know, this happens all the time on both sides of the coin. There's no way this doesn't just happen in this instance. It just so happened that he got recorded and he got laid out flat. And now he's trying to walk it all back as if nothing ever happened. My God, guys, this is the reason why I tell you, I do not trust any politician. This is the reason why I think our country has come to a place where the corruption is so deep and so entrenched that I think it's really going to be impossible to just elect a couple people, whether it be president, a couple of senators and whatever it may be, and and think that that's just going to resolve the issue. There has to be a complete flushing of all of this insanity out in order for us to ever move forward in any way that's truly going to be positive. That's going to be beneficial to people long term and that it's going to preserve our freedom and our independence as a nation from a globalist agenda. Because the truth be told, at the rate we are going, we are still moving towards whether slowly or or, or, or a little bit faster. We're moving towards that globalist end goal of toppling the United States and moving into a one world regime. That's where they're trying to pull us to our economy, through our medical through our, our, our government, through our business, our economy, everything's moving that way. The fact that our declaration specifically states the fact that we need to go in there, if we find something that is being corrupt and broken like this, we need to abolish and replace. We need to start again fresh and have a new system because this isn't working. I mean, look at what's going down down in Texas. Governor Abbott decided to put up barbed wire fencing to protect from these illegal immigrants who are coming in because the majority of them are not women and children, are not families. These are military aged men pouring in from Africa. How are they getting here from Africa? What are they doing? Taking boats? No, they're being flown into South America. Where are all these Chinese military aged men coming from? They're being flown over. And there's now been findings that there's camps down in Panama that are being set up and paid for by Mayorkas from the U.S. They're being funded. A joint collaboration between the Chinese and the U.S. to put them down there and set them up to pour them in. South American middle-aged men. And the kids that they are finding most likely do not belong to these people. Their families have been beaten, killed, raped, and they're taking these kids as a way to get sympathy to be able to cross the border. It's sickening. And so Governor Abbott stood up against the federal government and said, no, we're putting a barbed wire fence. We're protecting ourselves. This is an invasion and we're going to stop it. And he did just that. Then the Supreme Court came against them because of Biden and in a 5-4 ruling a couple of days ago determined that they are not able to keep their border closed. So they ordered federal agents to go and start snipping that barbed wire off. But Governor Abbott had his team set it right back up again. And he wrote this letter He just released this letter actually today as well. A lot going on at once. He says this. He says, the federal government has broken the compact between the United States and the states. The executive branch of the United States has a constitutional duty to enforce laws protecting states, including immigration laws on the books right now. President Biden has refused to enforce those laws and has even violated them. The result of that has been smashed records for illegal immigration. The failure of the Biden administration to fulfill the duties imposed by Article 4 has triggered Article 1, which reserves to this state the right of self-defense. For these reasons, I have already declared an invasion under Article 1 to invoke Texas's constitutional authority to defend and protect itself, that authority is the supreme law of the land and supersedes any federal statutes on the contrary. The Texas National Guard, Texas Department of Public Safety, and other Texas personnel are acting on that authority as well as state law to secure the Texas border. Signed, Governor Greg Abbott. Oklahoma recently just got behind Texas as well and said, you know what, now we're with you. We're coming with you. We are not going to allow this. We are opposed to this. And I guarantee you, in the next coming days or weeks, other states are going to be following the exact example. They're going to be following step. And it's probably going to be Florida. 
It's probably going to be New Mexico. It's probably going to be Arizona. I wouldn't even be surprised if certain parts of Southern California decide to say, now we're not even in agreement with Newsom and what he wants to do. We're going to start operating under our own. I mean, this is getting to a place where it's extremely dangerous. You're talking about secession. These conversations are popping up. Removing themselves from the United States and saying, we're going to move out on our own. Or a potential civil war scenario where the federal government says, no, we're not going to let you leave. Yeah, you're part of us. We control you. And they're going to want to do something about it. And this is where the start of war just might happen. Blows me away, though, that these things are happening simultaneously and there's really not a whole lot of coverage on it. And I want to get your thoughts on this because this is important to all of us. I mean, we're talking about the protection of our families, our children, our livelihood. As taxpayers, we're funding all of this and we're being hit with inflation. We're being hit with a higher cost. We're having to pay those taxes and penalties when we're filing our taxes or being delayed thereof. Our cost for everything is going up and they're giving people who are coming across the country, coming across the border, $3,000 per month. To do whatever they want, free cell phones, free housing, free food, free everything. And we're paying for it. There's a reason for that. People who can vote for them and people who will be on their side. It it is a globalist move, a tactic to tear down this country that has been established on the right to come here legally for people to work and to live out the American dream, to be able to make their way, to be able to build up your own wealth and fulfill the vision of capitalism and see whatever dream that you have become a reality if you work hard enough and and get it done. Not to give out freebies and handouts to anybody and stick the bill on you and I, the actual hardworking taxpayers. It's not right. I don't care which way you cut it up and it doesn't matter if it sounds politically correct or not. That's the truth. And it sickens me to my core that this is happening and there's not a lot of people standing up and speaking out against this. I'm all for humanity. I'm all for humanitarian aid. I'm all for feeding people, clothing people. But this is corruption that's occurred within their own countries. And the leaders of their own countries who are saying, yeah, you should leave the borders open and let people come. Those guys are infiltrated in drug money and other bad business, collecting, extorting money from people, murdering people, raping women, putting people in prison for no reason, dictatorships. But we have to bear the brunt. And they're not coming here to escape those things. The majority are not. There's some who are. Some who genuinely come here for the American dream to be law-abiding citizens, to come tap into this country and be a contributing member of society, a law-abiding citizen. But the large majority who are coming at this point in time, these are people who are being let out of insane asylums, let out of rehabs, let out of prisons, murderers, rapists, who are coming here, part of the cartels, to do and fulfill duties, whether they're part of terrorist organizations, whatever it may be, they're coming here to fulfill their duties and their mission, criminal activity. And we will be the recipients of that and we will pay for it at the same time. And that's not right. And I'll never agree with that. We need to enact the measures that have been stated within our Declaration of Independence. We need to take this thing back because it's getting to a place where we are about to go over the brink, as I've been saying over and over again, and it's about to be at the point where we're not going to be able to pull it back. We need that reset now. Let me know your thoughts on this, guys. I I really appreciate all of you. I'm sorry I I get really fired up on this because this is is our country. I'm thinking about our future, man. The strategies and tactics that are happening all at once. And so I want to hear from you guys. Drop your comments, please. Let me know what you think. Rumble, YouTube, hit that follow button. Hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed this content. Drop your comments. Turn on the bell for notifications so you know when we drop new content. Guys, we got a bunch of new merch that we just dropped. I'll show you right here. I'll put it up on the screen so you guys can go in there. Go buy something. Support the movement. Support the cause. I appreciate you guys so much. We're going to be coming back with much more. A couple of new interviews coming up here pretty soon, and some, including some presentations. I can't wait to share that with you guys. Much love to you. Continue to fight those psyops. We'll see you soon. Peace.